I'm an author and sex educator. I've written five books, uh, most recently Getting It, A Guide to Hot Healthy Hookups and Shame-Free Sex. And I'm most I'm best known for Girl Sex 101, which is a illustrated guidebook to sex between women or with women um, and vulvas and trans women and all the things that are associated with, you know, queer lesbian sex. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also a playwright and I write dramatic stuff. I write novels and I teach a lot of workshops uh, locally in Portland, but also all over the country around hand sex and cunnilingus and pleasure and communication and erotica, etc. Oh, that sounds so fun. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) We were flipping through your book, too, and it is so cool. Mm -hmm. I I love it. Yeah, we've been reading Girl (laughs) Sex 101, so Mm -hmm. it is so good. Highly recommend it. We'll make sure it's in the show notes, too. Yes. So thank you. That is what inspired us to reach out to you because we really want to get into hand sex or fingering um, and just learn a little bit more about what that is and how to be good at it Mm -hmm. Um, because I think we've both had some experiences that weren't so good Um, (laughs) like nine times out of ten yeah Yeah. (laughs) some uh, we've had a lot of experiences that weren't so good so do you want to start us off by kind of defining what hand sex or fingering is Sure. It's pretty simple. It's just sex using your hands. I think uh, when we look at the very heteronormative idea of what sex is, it always seems to be like penis entering vagina and everything else is not sex. And Mm -hmm. that's just not true. There are so many different ways to have sex and share pleasure. And I think hand sex or fingering or manual sex, if you want to get fancy, (laughs) uh, is a wonderful way of doing that. And I love it because hands are genderless and hands can create pleasure in so many different ways for so many different kinds of bodies. And I think that um, it's an underrepresented and underutilized aspect of sexuality that I would like to see more people engaging with in a, a good way, in a positive mm-hmm. way, in a way that is better than the experiences that you two have. Put yes, out. yes. Because when fingering, fingering done right is excellent. And I love, I love getting fingered when it's done right. So <laughs> if we could just teach it a little bit better so it's not so mm-hmm. pinchy and jabby, mm-hmm. then I think mm-hmm. we all could have a better time. Um, but you said hand sex can be genderless. So is fingering just for people with vaginas then? Or I mean, I, I would say, I mean, people often say fingering when they're talking about anuses as well. Mm. Um, so I'd say that, you know, it's the hands that are the genderless part of it. Obviously we can all have genders or not depending on our own choices and, and feelings about our bodies. Um, but I think that, you know, it, hand sex kind of is this great equalizer, you know, most of us have them, most of us can use them and we can use them in a lot of different ways. And I think that's really special. And I think, you know, when I look at people's kind of sexual trajectories, oftentimes, you know, we f- hand sex fingering is a explored a lot when you're first starting to explore sexuality. Yes. And then when, you know, penis vagina sex or penis anus sex comes on the table, oftentimes the fingering just kind of disappears. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of us, we're like, but no, I love that part. Why mm-hmm. are you, why are we not doing that anymore? It's not a step to get to the real thing. It can be very much part of the real thing. I mean, hand sex is something I do with many of my partners. Sometimes it's the main form of penetrative sex with my partners. Mm-hmm. And I, and I like it that much. Yeah. Why do you feel like it stayed like a juvenile, you know, type Mm -hmm. of act? Because, yeah, it's it's sex. So it's like, why wouldn't we carry it through everything, even as we get older? But why does it still stay like this thing you do when you're younger, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I I think it's this very heteronormative idea of, mm-hmm. like, centering the penis in sex acts, and mm-hmm. it's about penis pleasure, and everything else is just kind of extra or other, and I think that that's I mean, what I've, I'm trying to kind of refocus, that you can share extraordinary pleasure with partners, um, including penises, but not necessarily that they have to be the center of attention at all times, and um, I think that, you know, this is something I always like to teach, particularly straight cis men, is that, like, you know, hands are, are a fabulous way to extend the sexuality. Like if you're afraid you're going to come too soon, like pull out your cock and put your fingers in and keep going and keep the, the energy going. You don't have to, you know, worry about that, you, that you're going to come too soon or maybe you're having a hard time like staying in, focused on the other person. Like hands can be this wonderful way to asset all sorts of different sexual experiences. Um, and I think that like that it's, I mean, no matter what, like it can be an addition, not just, um, not just like, again, a step to get to the quote unquote real thing. Um, yeah. I'm really glad that you phrased it that way and talked about like straight cis men because I think there's this idea that like 
well, why would it, why would I do that when I can just use my penis? It's going to be so much better. And it's like, it's not always (laughs) first of all, but also it's like a PSA. Like, yes, it is worth getting good at. And it's worth like learning Mm -hmm. how to finger and how to like make this an enjoyable and like normal part of your sexual experiences. Yeah. Well, and oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But sorry, no, I'll, I'll add to that is that like a lot of the people that I that come to my workshops are straight cis men. And I have a lot of like love for men who are trying really hard to learn how to p- please their partners better. And I think one of the biggest anxieties that a lot of straight cis guys have is, you know, hydraulic issues, St- getting hard mm-hmm. when they want to be hard, staying hard the entire time until they until both partners are ready for them to not be hard anymore. That's a there's a lot of stress that adds to a lot of these guys' experiences of sex. And so when I'm like, put hands back on the table, it means like, you know, no matter how many whiskeys you've had, these aren't going soft, right? <laughs> yeah. like, and, and like, so you're, you're going to be able to just add another tool to your toolbox around like managing all of the, the pleasure you want to help create for your partner. And also again, like just the different kinds of sensations, just as much as I would say like, invite vibrators into the bedroom because sometimes mm-hmm. that can really um, like take your sex life to the next level hands are something that you can also just add to that roster of wonderful things you can use because hands create very different sensations than a penis or a dildo and i think that that's something that we should just kind of think about like what are the kinds of sensations i can generate how can i touch you in a way that i can't with uh, a cock or a dildo or whatever mm-hmm. there's so much more control mm-hmm. And, you know, for people who like the G-spot-ish being stimulated, it's just an easier access to it because then you know exactly where you're going and it's shorter. It's a shorter distance right here or whatever fingers you use, which leads me to my next question (laughs) of starting, like someone starting out fingering and like maybe they're still really new to it. So can we talk about some like technical basics, like how do you finger and where would you start would you start with just one just two and like which fingers I'll should ten. you i'll ten <laughs> is that something we would do i would not More recommend of... starting with all ten. <laughs> i think if you do like pair hands you know just straight in a dive <laughs> if you don't Swan know where dive. to start start with ten <laughs> and then work your way down <laughs> just, just saying not co-sign that statement um <laughs> Yeah. Well, so I think that, yeah, I mean, what I like to encourage people to think about first, especially let's talk about vulvas just Mm -hmm. right now, like stimulating a vulva with your, with your hands is thinking quote unquote outside the box, right? (laughs) Before you even start thinking about penetration, think about the ways you can touch the vulva, right? Which is all the parts on the outside of the body. So the clitoris, the labia, both the inner labia and the outer labia, the opening of the vagina has so many nerve endings, Um, the perineum, which is also called the taint. There's so much stuff down there. And there are so many parts that have a ton of nerve endings and really enjoy different kinds of touch. So my first step is always suggesting, like, focus on the outside. There's a really great move that I talk about in Girl Sex 101 that I learned from Midori, who's a sex educator, um, called the Pussy Hug. And it's really just like taking your hand, just the full, you know, flat of your hand and hugging the vulva. And it's a really lovely technique to begin with because it helps your partner know that, you know, your things are warming up. It helps your body get online it, and it's pressure. And I think bodies respond very well to pressure, right? Like mm-hmm. pussies in general respond very well to pressure. Um, obviously you want to take into account what your partner is t- talking to you about and what they're asking for. But I think generally, like sometimes when we're especially really new, we get so nervous about like breaking somebody's vulva, right? We're like, Oh no, it's their women are delicate flowers. I can't possibly. It's like, well, no, we push babies out sometimes. Not mine. Vaginas can handle a lot. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. like vaginas are, are, are potent, powerful things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think pressure is actually a really underutilized thing. It's also what, one of the reasons why we like to hump, right? Why we like to grind. It's that we're kind of getting all of that erectile tissue online. So it's a really good technique to start. Um, and I often recommend just not, not penetrating at all until you ask permission and you get a yes from them. And that's a consent thing, but it's also a pleasure thing. Uh, I tell this story in, all, in my How to Drive a Volvo workshop all the time because I think it's a really illustrative story. Um, I, my ex-girlfriend and I are both cis women, but golly gee, our bodies are built completely differently. It's kind of shocking how we have all the same parts, but our pleasure moves up through us very differently. Um, and for, for, for her... When I would be going down on her, touching her, if I was playing with her clit, 
when I, if I timed the penetration perfectly, it would just shoot her through the roof through pleasure. Like it would get her to come. She would just have an amazing time just with like penetration added. For me, if I'm on the clip train, I do not want to transfer to the vagina train. Mm-hmm. It's a very different sensation for me. And so I can enjoy both, but not at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if you're eating me out or, or, you know, diddling my clit, like if you put a finger inside me, now I feel like I have had to get off the train, stand on the platform and wait for the vagina train to come. (laughs) And then I can get on that train and go to where we're going. But it's, it's frustrating actually. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's a really, it's why it's important to ask because sometimes you just might might not want it at that moment. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, yes, I do like penetration, but not right now I'm enjoying what you're doing too much. So let's, table the penetration until later. Um, so I think that's a really important thing to think about. So like, this is why I say like penetrate with permission and like focus on the outside again, because often our clitorises get ignored. Mm -hmm. So if you can focus on, if your you know, partner or you like clitoral play, like focusing on the clit can be actually a really lovely thing to do again with your mouth or with hands, the toy. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are kind of the, the, the basic rules. If penetration is on the table, if your partner wants it, I have another kind of rule, uh, pads, not poke. Like you were, like you were saying, Emma, like the, the, the pokey is really obnoxious, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And it, it can feel really uncomfortable, particularly if that your per- partner has, you know, rough cuticles or nails. Yeah. It's, it's can be a rather unpleasant experience. Mm-hmm. So I like to think of it. So if we're thinking about the pussy hug, I'm going to try and be descriptive for your, <laughs> listening, for your audio. Listening. Thank you. If you think about the pussy hug and your, your hands are kind of flat against the vagina and the vulva, um, taking the kind of the part of your finger you use to press a, a, a doorbell, right? Like the, the pad of the thing, the part that the fingerprint is on rather than the pokey part. Um, because again, the pokey part, there's a bone right there and it's really quite unpleasant, but the pad is a pad. It's designed to be a little softer. Um, so if you, if you're, you know, if penetration is something that your partner wants, I recommend like dipping the pad gently inside the opening. And again, don't ignore the opening. The opening is really lovely. I've, I've had partners who can get off just from you kind of wringing the outside of their, their vaginal opening with the flat of a, a lubricated finger. That can feel amazing. Um, and one thing I like to do is also just kind of place the pad of my finger at the opening to their vagina and let them take me in, right? Like if your partner's real jazz that really wants to get fucked, like <laughs> putting your pad at your finger, like they're going to let you know that they want that finger inside. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's like, ready. <laughs> and like, I always consider that a really great thing when that happens, right? Because mm-hmm. now totally. it's like, great, like you want my finger in me, you're in you, you're going to have to come get it, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really fun way to play. That um, is because then you're like teasing a little bit too. Mm-hmm. And it becomes more of this, like, I want you to like, tell me that you need me type of mm-hmm. a thing. Um, mm-hmm. so that almost, yeah, like w- what you were saying with like asking to be entered, that's like also a good, like teasing game as well mm-hmm. as consent, obviously. Um, but I really like the hug idea. Yeah. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if we can focus a little bit more on the outside before we dive further, uh, into the <laughs> inside. That's my preferred technique. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like what are some techniques or strokes for the clit or to involve the labia? I, yeah, mm-hmm. any of it. <laughs> Yeah, all of it. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, from the pussy hug, and this is, a, a lot of the stuff is actually in Girl 601, so if you're a person who needs visual aids, there are drawings to describe what I'm going for. Um, so, from the pussy hug, I kind of, I recommend kind of a smoosh technique, so, like, hugging and then kind of smooshing all the lips and all the, the tissue kind of around in kind of a grindy motion. And, again, that's the kind of thing that you do if you're, like, humping someone's thigh. You're basically grinding all of your your bits um, on a firm <laughs> object. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is basically just the same thing, but you're the one doing the smooching mm-hmm. with, that's a technical term, by the way. The <laughs> um, and that is with, scientific. With your hand. Colloquial term for the smoosh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and this is actually a good time to talk about the internal clitoral structure, right? Mm-hmm. So I, have you have you described the internal clitoral structure to your listeners before, or shall I? We have, we but always please, use a refresher. please do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have a visual aid, but I will describe it for the listeners. So this is a not-to-scale size of the internal clitoral structure. <laughs> That's mine. Um, That's the size of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking huge. <laughs> it's literally the size of a hand. <laughs> it's fucking huge. Awesome. Love it. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a smaller version. This is actually this is actually the uh, 
anatomical size. Oh, oh, okay. Again, hard, hard to say, but this is like a, it's kind of a translucent pussy. Um, anyway, <laughs> but uh, so what's interesting about this, so the, the clitoris is very much more than meets the eye. I mean, the clitoral head sticks out of the body, which we all kind of consider the clit. But then there's a lot of erectile tissue underneath. And these, there are these, these kind of wishbone shapes that create are the, called the clitoral legs. And then there's these bulbs, which are the clitoral bulbs. And the clitoral bulbs are actually underneath, they are deep inside the body, underneath the outer labial tissue, right? So that's why one of the reasons why smushing and humping feels good is because you're actually stimulating the internal clitoral structure, not just the head of the clit. So anything that kind of creates pressure on the vulva um, can help get the entire clitoris excited and online, um, which is pretty cool. And I believe there's research to show that um, the, the clitoris can actually get erect in different stages. So unlike a penis where it's like you're kind of like, you can be different stages of hardness, but the chambers of erectile tissue generally come all erect together or not. So Mm -hmm. that basically is why you don't have like a a erection that kind of curves (laughs) and then goes straight, Mm -hmm. right? With a clitoris, like actually the bulbs can get engorged and the legs can get engorged and the head can get engorged in different stages. Mm. Um, So um, if you're only focused on the clitoral head, you might only be getting the clitoral head excited when there's all this other tissue um, that can feel pleasure. Okay. So that's a, I think that's a really important thing to think about, which is why, again, like, yeah. you know, touching the, the labia, labia inner and outer can be absolutely lovely. Mm-hmm. So what is the right way to touch it? Obviously, there's the pussy hug, but are there any other ways to touch the labia? All this in my head is just like, <laughs> like inchworming along them. Yeah. <laughs> well, also because yeah. I feel like people who like – give pleasure to vulvas stay away from the inner labia Mm. and i mean because like maybe you don't know how to touch them but i didn't even Mm. know that that was like necessarily super pleasurable until we started talking about masturbation with susan and like Mm. how touching all of that can feel really good and we should be paying more attention to it so yes how how so can we (laughs) inch along those labia and without doing what you just squeezing between my fingers yes (laughs) Yeah. Uh, well, so anatomically speaking, uh, the outer labia are akin to the scrotum for, for people with penises, right? Okay. So just putting that in your head is really helpful. Um, and this is something I like to talk about because it helps if you kind of have clocked a lot of time with one set of genitals, um, it's, it kind of helps to map it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I think is interesting is the inner labia actually, even though the outer labia are more akin to scrotal tissue, the inner labia actually feel a lot more like scrotal tissue. They're kind of slick. They're very mm-hmm. stretchy. Um, and they, in, they kind of, you can kind of twist them and they don't hurt. You can tug, <laughs> you can pinch, and they generally don't hurt. Um, so I think that's something that, again, for cis guys to know is really good. Like, because if you can, like, what you can do to your sack is kind of what you can do to an inner, inner labia. And so that can be kind of I fun. can twist a um, sack? <laughs> well, okay. right. So let me just pause. Thank you, Thank you for giving Allison me Allison said this would feel good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you can twist the skin of the sack as long as the nuts and the tubes are not involved. Okay. Right? Um, so it's actually the, just the tissue I'm talking about. The internal stuff you really want to leave alone for the most part. It's the <laughs> it's the it's the external tissue that can stretch and you can twist and and again, hopefully the the, the cis guys listening at home know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but I, I yeah, thank you for letting me clarify. Please do not <laughs> and uh, start non consensual cock and ball torture. <laughs> that is not what I'm talking about. Fair enough. Glad we made that point clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, is, that is good to know okay. about labia yeah. too. The, mm-hmm. the twisting, the, I feel like those are good points to bring up because they do feel more delicate. So I feel like they get handled delicately mm-hmm. if they touch them. Mm-hmm. But that's not always, we don't want just like a little pet sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. Get in there. Well, <laughs> yeah. don't do that. <laughs> don't full on grab it. Bear claw. Bear claw. It. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the outer play. Outer play yeah. is important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I was going to talk nope. about another technique. But yes, please okay. do. So, mm-hmm. 
One of the other things that uh, another move that I like to talk about is what I call the safety scissors. And this is again, all, all because I had to come up with names for things because I wrote a book. This is not like some sort of text. Um, <laughs> this is not like canon. Yeah. Um, so safety scissors and the inverted Vulcan. Okay. So these are two moves that are great for the outside. Um, and they all again, start from the pussy hug. If you think of pussy hug is like the first position in, uh, in dance, mm-hmm. these are all kind of variations on the theme. Um, so the inverted Vulcan is for the Trekkies in the room, you think about live long and prosper, and then you flip it upside down, and now you've got oh. this Vulcan thing. So, um, ooh, can I? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's so funny now. I, I get love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, live long and prosper, upside down. And so, this is my flashlight visual aid that I used to teach. Basically, what it looks like. So, if the pussy hug is this, right, mm-hmm. then the inverted Vulcan is like this. So what you do with that is you're putting either of the fingers of the live long and prosper on the outer labia and pressing, and then it isolates the inner labia and the clitoris, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And the clitoral head so that you can do other things to it, or you can just kind of, you know, leave them in play. Um, And then the safety scissors is basically the same thing, but just then you you pinch together. Um, And that can be a really fun move. I actually learned that from Nina Hartley, who is a porn star, um, this is a humble brag, but it's really just a brag. We were in bed together once, and um, how do you? And she was doing this to me. Yeah, I have a I have a very charmed life. Um, <laughs> and she did this to me, where she basically put her hands like this, and then squeezed, and she isolated the shaft of my clitoris, that very small shaft that sticks out from the body, right that attaches the head. Um, she isolated it basically in the crux of her fingers, and by pinching gently, not you know, but she held me, and then she said, "Now do your kegels." your pelvic floor muscles exercises and in doing so it basically like jerked my clit off in between her fingers and i thought that was such a cool technique um and it's just kind of because it allows you to control your own experience of how your clitoris is getting stimulated while your partner or you just hold the clitoris kind of stable mm-hmm. that was a really neat move that's that feels like kind of like a, a pro move that i got from a professional yeah. so. <laughs> that's awesome that's well because so it cool. can start basic and then you can like level up <laughs> yeah because you're like hug mm-hmm. open squeeze <laughs> squeeze <Yeah. laughs> kegel kegel <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I mean, love you that. have to move through these like they're a square dance or anything. Like you can kind of play <laughs> well. with these things. But I, I think it helps people get get like start thinking creatively about how to kind of combine vulvas and hands in fun, mm-hmm. pleasurable ways. Yeah, and learning if you like that pressure and like that type of movement too on the outside can open up masturbation, can open up your pleasure with a partner. I think that's great. Mm-hmm pressure is awesome. And just like mm-hmm. a very specific technical question. So when you're doing the hug, well, no, you already answered that with the smooshing. So with mm-hmm. the inverted ful- Vulcan, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, so it um, for that one. yeah. Do you move with that as well? Or do you just stay there with pressure or is it up to you? You certainly can. I mean, you can do either. I think, I mean, oftentimes, Again, like the more excited that your partner is getting, the more they're going to move, right? Like you put pressure against them and they're like, yeah, right. (laughs) You don't even Um, have to. And so I think, (laughs) yeah. And again, like it's, it can be kind of like, I mean, I also often encourage people to do, you know, what I call R and D nights, research and development, like where you're, you get to kind of just map their pussy. You map what feels good to them. And of course this can change at different points in a month's life or different days of the week. Like it changes, but I think it's really lovely to kind of, just to, like investigate and pay attention mm-hmm. and just kind of feel what it feels like and get to know what their face does when they're feeling pleasure, get to know what their voice does, like, because everybody's different. And I think it's, you know, it's good to just kind of start to build not only a map of a individual's pleasure, but your own understanding of how different people respond to touch, because that just makes you a more dexterous lover. And I think that's a really useful thing. Mm-hmm. Jinx in 100%. That's yeah. so true. Um, <laughs> so do we want to go in? Now? Yeah. Okay. Let's go in. Let's go in. <laughs> so awesome. Do you encourage going in from like the pussy hug or are there better positions to start fingering to start the mm-hmm. finger? Well, I mean, a lot of times the pussy hug is kind of, it kind of evolves from just like how often people naturally fall into sex. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's usually like one person is kind of, like one person's on their back. One person is kind of like slightly on top and your, your hands are going down pants. And then that's kind of where the pussy hug comes from because you're kind of reaching down. Right. Mm-hmm. Now this is not necessarily how all sex begins, but this is just kind of like 
just tends to be the case. You're making out in the car, you're making out in the bed. Like this is often where it comes from. Um, so yeah, you can certainly pussy hug from other positions. You can go bottom up all the things. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, and one of the challenges with hand sex can sometimes be just actual like body stuff, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very common thing. If you like hand sex is like, and this is kind of hard to demonstrate while sitting down, but like your, your wrist can get kind of weird, right? Mm -hmm. If you've ever had that kind of like, like, and it kind of can feel a little uncomfortable. Um, so one thing I like to say is like, basically when you're exploring, if you're like kissing at the same time, like you can use your fingers on the outside, but if you're going to like move transition to like, like hardcore fucking, like you're really going to like get in there. Um, it's a good idea to lower your body a little bit, again, depending on the, the length of your arms, etc. cetera, to, to, but to make that your wrist more in a straight line. So it's not mm-hmm. jacked in a weird way mm-hmm. um, because that just gives you more power and then more like consistency. You can stay, you, you won't tire out your muscles quite as quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like to kind of just tell people to drop their shoulder a little bit. Um, and again, if you're roughly the same size, sometimes that means like you might lower yourself to their breasts or their chest area um, that it allows you to kind of just adjust your arm to be able to kind of reach deeper inside if that's something that they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because sometimes the cup around too, that's when it can get a little pinchy because mm-hmm. if you're like, say your pants are still on or something or you're like doing it in the car, that's where it's like, okay, ow, ow, yeah. ow, <laughs> you know, yeah. those are my labia. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I mean, like, that also might be a, a lubrication thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like um, sometimes like if our own natural lubrication, if we have it at all, can get kind of s- stuck inside. It won't necessarily like drip out. And this again, is, everybody's different, but like depending on how much pubic hair you have, depending on how, how big your lips are, sometimes like you can be really wet, but you can't really feel the wetness until you're actually already inside. Um, so sometimes what you're, that pinchiness is actually drag, right? Mm. It's like friction. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just something to think about like to, if you're okay with, you know, spit as lube, you can like, you know, spit on your finger or put them in their mouth and be all sexy about that before you go inside. Um, and also like, I think that if you're again, kind of on the approach to inside, like, feel around like open their lips a little bit and feel for the moisture and like really and that's where kind of ringing the vaginal opening can be really satisfying because now you're like making sure everything's nice and slick before you go inside which i think is a good idea Mm -hmm. follow the water (laughs) (laughs) yeah what's that what's that old school like technique where you have the sticks looking for water i don't know oh i know what you're talking i I love it. That's so funny. So for, I know we've talked about with hand jobs, it's really good to use lube. So is it always, would you encourage using lube for fingering or would you encourage like checking to see if your like vaginal opening has its own lubrication first? I generally like to ask my partner what they want. Some people like really wet. Some people like friction. Mm-hmm. Um, Generally speaking, I think it's just good to normalize having lube around and talking right. about it and checking in. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, for instance, like my partner and I have been together for 15 years now. My body just doesn't respond as, as it used to, right? Like, I'm so used to my partner's hormones. They just don't get me, like, super drenched like a new person might. That's just mm-hmm. biology. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes I'm like, like, let's just reach for the lube. And, again, like just like integrating toys, I mean, like we – like, we, like people had to do in the 80s, integrating condoms. Like, people were really resistant to it at the beginning. And then they're like, well, this is actually necessary. So you had to learn how to integrate condoms sex- sexily into the play. And now it's, for most of us, it's a matter of course. Like, mm-hmm. here's the condom, put it on, no big deal. Right. Um, I think that we can, it, we can stand to normalize lubrication in the same way. Like, bring bottled stuff. You're going to go over to a partner's house for a hot sex date? Like, you're going to bring condoms? you know, Mm -hmm. just to ask. Um, And I think this is also true because like sometimes your experience of what it feels like as the kind of the giver of sensation is very different from the receiver. Like I might catch somebody and like, wow, they're like super wet. And they're like, oh, I need more lube. I'm like, that's great. Like that's information that I wouldn't be able to get. Um, And sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes I'm like, are you sure you don't want lube? And they're like, no, I feel great. So it's like, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's a good idea in general, just kind of to normalize talking about and asking. And then also, you know, when you're doing your own exploration of your own body, figure out what it feels like to play with different kinds of lubes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we always love good lube talk, good Mm -hmm. lube normalization. (laughs) 
<laughs> and I'm also glad that you just talked about friction as well because we've actually had a couple of people respond because we did an episode just on mm-hmm. lube and we've talked about it a number of times, but we've had people reach out and say, actually, I don't really like using lube because I really like the friction. So I'm really glad mm-hmm. that you brought that up mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, I think a little friction could be could be nice. Could be nice. <laughs> so if we're if we're going in, if we're shoulders dropped and we're ready to get in there, I thought you were going to say shoulder deep. If we're <laughs> <laughs> not reaching inside like this, see the amount of times I've thought of you know how when you have to reach, you're a farmer. <laughs> what are you saying? You know when you're a farmer. <laughs> You know, like when you reach inside of a cow. Oh, the amount of times I've thought about that on this podcast is not healthy. So that's just what made me think. Well, of I just wish you would have kept it to yourself. I do too. I <laughs> You've do been too. keeping it to yourself for what a year now. You couldn't wait. You know, when you're a farmer and you reach inside of a cow's ass. That's what I was thinking about just now. Any who's old. Wow, who's horny? <laughs> <laughs> now who wants to talk about sex? <laughs> Let's go. Woo! Anyways. Anyways. So your shoulders dropped. Your shoulders and dropped in. and you're going in. Which fingers do you in, do you think you should start with? Um, it's really personal preference. I, I, I to tend to off. start with my middle finger because it's the longest. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so like that, and that's usually kind of like, and like with the pussy, that kind of tends to be where I tend to mm, kind mm-hmm. of position my hand, uh, where kind of the, my middle finger will be kind of right at the bottom of the vaginal opening on the, like, just above the taint. That's kind of how I do it. Um, but that also can kind of create an awkward thing if you're only using one finger. It can be kind mm-hmm. of uncomfortable. So sometimes the, the index finger is the, what people go for, and I think that's perfectly fine. Never met anyone who leads with the pinky, but, you know, I'm open <laughs> to all, all experiences. I'm hoping to hear that um, argument, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, and most people, I mean, like, I would rec- I always recommend, like, starting with one finger and then asking for, if you want more. Again, it's very, it's very similar. Like, sometimes you feel like there's a lot of room in there, but the person receiving actually feels like it's very tight. So it's, it's, and this is what I love about, you know, being a woman who has sex with people with vaginas is that I'm like, it's amazing to me how my experience of my own body is so different from my experience of having sex with other, other people with vulvas. And I just think it's, it's cool. But I also think it's like, wow, like I would think that you'd be able to take a whole fist, but you're like, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> um, or vice versa. Right. Where you're too like, much. I'm like, really, you want me to add how many more fingers? Are you sure? And they're like, yeah. So that's another thing. So I Mm -hmm. like to say, like, do you want more? Because like the experience of penetration is one thing. And then the experience of girth is another. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes, and this is also a thing that I like to encourage to spend to think about is like size kind of, I mean, the whole size, the size matter thing. Oftentimes when we're talking about size mattering, we're talking about girth, Mm -hmm. the feeling of fullness, not the feeling of having my cervix land, right? Mm -hmm. So like length isn't necessarily as important as girth is when it comes to feeling full. And this is another reason why I like to encourage this men to get good at their hands is because like if your penis isn't the, isn't the shape that your partner likes to feel really full, then you can add fingers and you can basically kind of switch it up between your penis and head sex to create that sensation of girth that they might be looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I'd say like, you know, start with one. I, most people generally like to stick with two. Uh, that's a, I feel like a pretty safe place to be. Um, but again, always ask. And then again, like, you know, you, and then I encourage people to also tell me, like, if you want more, just tell me. Um, and this is something that I think people, it's just always good to get better at communication with asking for what you want. Some people clam up, but like saying like, can you put another finger inside me is, one hot and two <laughs> makes me feel like you're actively engaged in your experience of pleasure which makes mm-hmm. me feel a lot safer as a person who is penetrating someone mm-hmm. that makes sense so once you are in there regardless of how many fingers it is what are some things that you can do like are you going in and out are you staying in and like swishing <laughs> yeah so this is something that i think is kind of a problem with mainstream porn is that like kind of lingus Fingering doesn't necessarily look like much because what tends to feel good to the inside of a vagina isn't a lot of fast in and out. Mm -hmm. It tends to be more about like exploring the inner landscape of the vagina, right? Exploring the different parts of the body that that respond well to touch. The G spot is one of them, um, but there's a spot just above the G spot um, that can feel really good as well. People like feeling, um, if you like going deep, if they like deep sensations, sometimes kind of ringing around the cervix. There's a lot of yummy tissue up there. 
Um, so it's a lot of more about thinking about, again, creating pressure on the inside of the body. Um, so not so much the fast, fast, fast in and out. There's a time and place for that too. But I think one of the misconceptions that a lot of new fingers have is that they have to start really just jackrabbiting, um, which is not, that's something that's very porny. It looks good, but it doesn't actually feel pretty good to many, many people. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, thinking about that, I mean, one of my favorite times I had with um, in sex with a new lover was they kind of just started, they were like kind of just exploring. Like they put two fingers in there, like they kind of twist, put, put their hands so that their fingers were facing my spine and they were kind of stroking the, my vaginal wall towards my spine. I'm like, well, that's interesting. How does that feel to you? And then they turned, so they were kind of stroking one of the sides and they really started just kind of, again, getting a, a map of how pleasure moved through me. Um, G-spot stimulation, you know, it's a very common thing that you hear a lot about in workshops and stuff. And that's, um, and that's basically, it's kind of nice because the G-spot is a little bit of a landmark on the inside of the body. Most of us, it feels distinctly different from the rest of the inside of the vagina. So for people who like G-spot stimulation, you can kind of like find it. Right. Um, and G spot stimulation can feel great. It can feel great on some days. It can feel it can not feel great on others. Um, it basically can create a sensation of feeling like you need to pee. So mm-hmm. some people find that sexy. Some people find that really nerve wracking, especially if you're with a new person. Um, so that's something, again, like I encourage people to explore for themselves if they have a G spot. Um, but then also like when you're with somebody new, like check in, like, how does that feel? Like, do you like this sensation? Just getting clear so that they can kind of, because oftentimes we don't know what's happening inside our body. You'll be like, what are you doing? That's so interesting. <laughs> um, so if you, you know, ask, like, do, like you can kind of talk about it and then learn new things about your body or your, or your lover's body. Mm-hmm. For someone who is just, like, hasn't ever fingered a vulva before, what can they expect to feel when you go inside? Like, what is that going to be? be like because I can only go as as far as I can go you know if you're doing the grab and you're reaching inside mm-hmm. so I feel like I know maybe an inch and a half of what the inside of a vulva would f- or a vagina would feel like you haven't mapped very mm-hmm. far. I haven't mapped very far I can't reach very far <laughs> yeah. so what can someone expect and like you said the g-spot's a landmark so what is all that feeling like for them sure um well I mean like, the first thing I'm like this is making me think back of the first time I ever had sex with a woman and I'm like oh Hello. 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 Allison. <laughs> um, I mean, I think for me, this, the most interesting thing was how, how hot it is inside, like physically hot mm-hmm. um, and how often wet it is. Like, I, I mean, the whole like warm apple pie thing, like it's a dumb joke from a dumb movie, but it's also kind of true. Um, <laughs> So um, that's oh interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I mean, there are, there are there are landmarks that you can feel, and then there are kind of landmarks that only the receiver can feel. Um, so the G spot is a really interesting one because the texture of the inside of the vagina is very slick and very smooth. Um, there's not a whole lot of, of texture in there, um, but the G spot is very different. And the way I always describe it is: you can take your tongue, keep it in your mouth, but run it up from the back of the, behind your front teeth up to the roof of your mouth. And you feel the texture of your, the roof of your mouth change. You feel that it's kind of ridges, like basically right before you get to your hard palate. And it's almost like brain coral. I don't know if that's a thing that like, but it's, a, it's an interesting texture that's very ridgy. Mm-hmm. And that's when the G spot is very aroused. Basically when you, you're really feeling turned on, the G spot is what swells with erectile, with fluid. And then kind of it dips into the vaginal, open, the, the vagina itself. And so it's, and again, like the size and it feels a little, it's kind of like the size of like a, a Nerf ping pong ball, you know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's small, but like present. Um, now, granted, again, everybody's different. And so sometimes you won't feel that at all. Sometimes it'll take a really long time to feel that. Um, it really just depends on how your body's put together. But generally it's like the more like, turned on like fuck energy the 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 more likely you are to feel it Mm -hmm. um so that's an interesting landmark and because it is round and kind of like you'll feel like only part of the sphere of what it is it kind of dips into the vagina and you can you can circle it with your fingers you can kind of feel the 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 spatial experience of it which i think is really interesting Mm -hmm. um and then that's why like some people like to have like direct pressure like kind of right on it. Some people like the come hither thing, which is like where you kind of hook your fingers behind the G-spot and kind of tug it towards the outside of the body. Some people kind of like you to kind of 
circumvent it a little bit with fingers. Like there's a lot of different things you can do, um, which is why again, hand sex is great because you can't do those things with penises or dildos. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, interesting. Um, And then to then kind of, again, you've got the slick, the slick skin of the internal vaginal structure. And then at the very top, Um, For people who have cervixes, which is this organ that separates the uterus from the vagina, um, the cervix kind of dips into the vagina at the very top. For most of us, it's hard to feel our own unless we're in very interesting positions because just fingers and vaginas, sizes and depths Mm -hmm. being what they are. Um, But often, uh, if you have longer fingers and they have a shorter vagina, you can feel another person's cervix. And it's very slick. Um, It's an interesting shape. It feels kind of like a funnel. And in the middle of the cervix is a pore. And that's called the os, O-S. And that's just, it's basically an opening. And that's what dilates when you are menstruating, or when you are, you know, getting ready to have a baby, right? Like your, your os gets open. And, the, and I think of it as like the stargate to the uterus. It is this like interesting kind of, you know, hole mm-hmm. that gets bigger to accommodate things going in and things com- coming out. Um, but I think the cervix is a really interesting organ. And some people really love cervical stimulation. In my very anecdotal experience, most of those people enjoy it right before they're about to ovulate. Right. Mm-hmm. And we can maybe imagine why that is the case. Right. <laughs> right. Like, pregnant. Yeah. So it's like, I'm here. So yeah, cervical stimulation can be really nice, but it can also be like, depending on where you are in your cycle or just sometimes it's like anathema. So it's all very different. Um, and then there is a little bit of like a gully. Like I said, it's kind of a funnel shape at the top. And that gully is kind of where the vaginal tissue kind of ends at the cervix. And it's, you can kind of, some people like to have that kind of circled um, with the fingertip. Uh, this is where it can be a little bit difficult, again, with fin- long fingernails, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, but that can feel really yummy to some people as well. So those are pretty much the main things you'll feel. Um, you can also, again, like if you're pressed down, you can, you can feel bones. That's definitely a thing. You'll be able to feel hip bones. You'll be able to feel sometimes the, the, the tailbone, depending on how hard you push and in which direction. So that's something that's also true. This is particularly, sorry, I'm just going on a rant now, but this is particularly <laughs> no, no, true no. for trans women with neo-vaginas with surgically installed vaginas, because oftentimes trans women's uh, hips, their hip bones are not as wide mm-hmm. because they don't have the vaginal canal kind of structure in their skeletal system. Um, so oftentimes, if you're if you're fingering a, a trans woman who's had bottom surgery, you'll feel the bones much more distinctly than you might in a cis woman's body, which I think is cool. I have no idea. I didn't even know you could feel bones. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have known. <laughs> Bananas. I love it. <laughs> I I feel like you've talked about it a little bit, but I had more questions the more you were talking about positions what are some Mm. of your favorite or top positions for fingering um Mm. yeah you said drop your shoulder but maybe full body positions (laughs) Mm -hmm. where do we position those yeah gosh so much i mean there's so there's so many different ways of doing it like i i certainly think that like kind of like almost quasi missionary right like Mm -hmm. the receiver's on their back the top is kind of in front um for kind of when if hand fucking gets you know very highly energetic i often like to as a top get on my knees and kind of like pull my entire body such that I'm kneeling next to their pelvis. Um, and this, you know, creates a little bit of a distance. So if you're really into the, the kissing and the loving, and like I, that can sometimes you want to pull them a little closer. Um, but I like it because it gives me a, a lot more purchase, a lot more strength. Um, and then I can also see what's going on. So like if they want me to stimulate their clitoris at the same time, for instance, like now I have, can either use my other hand or I can use my hand with a toy. I can use the thumb on the penetrative hand. Um, but it's helpful to sometimes see that. So I like to kind of get on my knees. And this is, again, really common. If, like, if you are getting into a place where they are just like, fuck me, you're great. <laughs> um, and this is where it's like it's nice to have the like the, to be able to really use your, your shoulder, shoulder into in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've definitely had people kind of ride my hand while I'm on their back and like my back and they're on top of me, like the, the cowgirl position. Um, that can feel really fun. It's, it's in that case, you could just, I think it's just great to kind of hold your fingers, you know, stable and let them just, you know, bounce around and have grand old time on top of you. Um, that I think in that case, it's important to really stabilize your arm, your hand, arm and wrist with your, your own body. So basically like have it kind of be like, basically put it on top of your own pelvis so that they can bounce that way, which I think is really good. Um, 
I mean, doggy style is fun. Um, that one's just, I don't know. I mean, that's lovely. Lot, you have a lot of room if they like being spanked. That's great. Um, and that's a nice one because oftentimes with doggy style, if you're fucking them, you can kind of reach out and play with their clit a little bit and then come back in. Um, I think that just, that's just mm-hmm. nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. If you're doggy style, does that mean that your fingers are rotated differently than they would be if the receiver was in missionary? So like, would your knuckles then be towards the front of... Yeah, often. Yeah, I mean, you can't... I mean, again, depending on how... Like, so when a person is kneeling in front of you, they might be taller still than you. So you might it might be a little awkward. Um, but I, in my experience, often doggy style can be nice because then you're, you can hit the G spot by going down mm, mm-hmm. um so like your fingers you're like you're saying like you're going to rotate so you're you're fingering this way mm-hmm. um that can be a really nice sensation it can also be good for if, again if you have wrist challenges or whatnot to kind of just try it that way um and then again like you have gravity so like maybe that's like that helps you a little bit too um but yeah i think that can be a lovely position as well and yeah that being able to play with different rotations of your hand is is a great idea and i think that can create lots of different yummy sensations mm-hmm would you encourage trying that slowly? Like if you are want to play with like <laughs> rotating and like moving your hands all around, like doing that slowly for the receiver? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's actually, I mean, all of these transitions or what we think of transitions can actually be the moves themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. if, you, if you, they're on their knees and you're fingering them this way, like as you rotate your fingers, that's going to create sensations. Right. And that's a, that can create, I mean, that by itself, just rotating like this inside somebody can feel amazing. I had a lover once who she had crossed her fingers like this and was doing this. Whoa. Inside me. And so that top knuckle, like just was creating this amazing sensation really all the way around the inside of my vagina. I thought it was so cool. And then she kind of started kind of corkscrewing in and out. So it's hard to see, like, I'm kind of doing that. And it was a cool, it just really felt neat. Cause it was like, it was just hitting me in all sorts of different ways that I've never felt before. And I'm like, that's freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of those things, like I was saying, like as a receiver, you don't always know what's happening. I remember being like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> How many fingers <laughs> do you have <laughs> down there? <laughs> yeah. It's just neat. So. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. I love when people get a little crafty. Mm-hmm. So creative. <laughs> so creative. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of getting a little creative, if you wanted to like boost up the f- sassiness, adding in oral, is that hard? <laughs> I really like fingering and oral. And I never know if I'm asking a lot <laughs> of the person I'm having sex with or if that's an easier task than like I than they make it seem. <laughs> that's a great question. I think sometimes the ch- big challenge can be keeping different rhythms. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if you're licking a clit in a specific rhythm and then fucking them in a different rhythm, you know, that's a musical problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that can be a challenge. But uh, again, like I think for me, like I'm one of those people who I'm like, you you want this? Like, all right, like, let's get to work. Like you're, you're letting me inside your vagina. Like this is a good problem to have. Right. So I like to think like, OK, let's let's figure out how to do this. Um, one thing is like I actually think that sometimes it can be a little I mean, it can be kind of nice because let's, again, I'm imagining like they're on their backs, I'm between their legs, licking their clit. And then basically your, your hand is at your chin, right? Because bulbs are not very large. And so there's not a whole lot of room in there, but like this actually, like this isn't very hard to do or like kind of do this while I'm licking. Like it doesn't really change a whole lot. Um, And sometimes it's enough to just feel kind of like it's just feeling full you mm-hmm. might not have to do a bunch with your fingers inside um while you're playing with their clit sometimes they just want to be able to you know squeeze and bear down on a thing mm-hmm. so it can be something where you can combine this and it won't be super stressful but i mean if you are if you like the like let's just see if we can like get up get the speed bag going with the clit <laughs> and then get the g-spot going like i think that's that can be really fun mm-hmm. and sometimes actually that overwhelm of sensation can actually be really exciting for the receiver. Like just feeling like just a flood with all sorts of things going on. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that can be fun to, fun to play around with. Yeah. One of the, sorry, go ahead. No, you go. I was gonna say one of the like best times I feel like getting fingered and getting eaten out at the same time is when how you were saying, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but it is great. (laughs) You're doing a lot and it's fantastic. You're doing a great job. (laughs) Whatever it is, is, keep going. Soldier on. (laughs) Yep. 
Last question from me. So I'm not sure how I'm going to phrase it or if I'm going to phrase it correctly because I don't totally remember the term, but I was reading about fingering for people who have a penis and testicles. I believe it was called muffing. Does that sound Mm -hmm. correct? Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. That is a a very different technique, but I think it's a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. I first learned about muffing in a zine called Fucking Trans Women, written by Mira Bellwether, um, where she talks about it at length, and it's really interesting. It's basically digitally penetrating a person's inguinal canal. And the inguinal canal (laughs) in a person who's born with testes is this is basically this kind of uh, uh, cavity inside the body where the testes and the tubes kind of come out of uh, when you're in utero, basically as a, as a, you know, a penis owner develops in utero, the testes descend through those inguinal canals and then the tubes are still kind of up through there. So um, everybody has two of them on, uh, on people with born with vulvas they tend to be much smaller, kind of not because we don't have all the tubes that that mm-hmm. testes owners have. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically, it's kind of in order to do it. And um, again, I talk about it in Girl Sex One Hundred and One. I have a whole page devoted to it because I think it's a really interesting t- technique. I've never done it myself to somebody who really. Well, I mean, like I've done it to people who wanted it, but like it's not not somebody to who's to, to whom that is their sex life. Um, I did it to a cis man once out of kind of like can we try this? And Mm -hmm. it's not particularly fond of the technique, but it's, it's a very, again, it's a very intense sensation. Mm -hmm. Um, But for people who just want to feel penetrated, particularly if they don't like anal and they don't have a vagina, like this can be a fun technique to try. Um, But basically you, if you're feeling, and this is again, where it's like really important to like listen with your fingers, listen with your hands, you follow the testes and you follow the tubes up into the body and you'll feel basically kind of this opening. And it's really, you know, just kind of, you, and you, because the skin of the, the scrotum is so stretchy, you can kind of, you know, kind of invert that skin and you kind of push inside up into the canal. And that can have a lot of nerve endings right around that that opening kind of like the opening to the vagina and so sometimes it's just kind of like gently moving around but for people who like it particularly for trans women who like the feeling of being penetrated like this can feel like a really affirming sexy way because it's very similar to deep vaginal penetration without having a vagina Mm -hmm. but i think it's an interesting technique Uh, it's definitely i definitely recommend um exploring it if that sounds like something fun that zine is great um, and then also I've seen some porn that shows it. Uh, Toby Hill Meyer is a porn performer and she has a, a movie uh, with her film company called Hand Basket, Hand Basket Productions where there is a muffing scene. So you can kind of see what it looks like, yeah. which I think is probably a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Definitely a good place to start would just be to see it first. Yeah. For, me, for this gal, at least. <laughs> you don't it's want hard to just to try to if you don't know all the parts I'm talking about. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a, yeah, wrapping your head around it. Yeah, no poking. Yeah. No poking That's in that situation. Probably, yeah. No pinching, yeah, twisting, and poking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I loved exploring fingering a little bit more. This has been fun. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, where can our listeners continue to connect with you after the episode? Sure. So you can find my books at girlsex101.com. I'm on Twitter at Hey Allie Moon. That's H-E-Y-A-L-L-I-E-M-O-O-N. Um, and I'm on Instagram at Allison underscore Moon. I don't tend to to post very much about sex. It's mostly just pictures of my dog. Uh, but, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, you can you can find me on Instagram there. Perfect. Thank you so, so much.